Why do we all use dark mode? Why do we all use dark mode? Because light attracts bugs. Hello folks, welcome back to our podcast of Arnav and Mo, where I take 90% of the time to roast Arnav. back to our podcast but this time this will be a bit different we will be uh as you might have noticed from the title on top that this is a new series where we are unveiling some of the deepest darkest secrets of lead code because you know as software engineers in the industry we all hate it and i think there's a um i forgot i can't speak anywho so getting to it before we jump into it and like what this series will be about i just want to give a brief shout out to what our channel is about so arnav and mo again we are two software engineers currently working in the industry uh we are like i think our journeys we studied together we did the same program we almost took everything together so i think uh and over the period of time we obviously made mistakes so this channel is about uncovering them and seeing if we can help people out by by talking through our mistakes and anywho by the way uh we have our socials also set up like arnav and mo on instagram uh tweet about us if you want to honestly i don't know why you would but you know if you really want to you can on our instagram channel if you want to follow us follow if you if not you know sucks to be you but uh, we also do have our tiktok set up so please 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 give us a follow and if we reach 100 subscribers we're gonna put a bag on arnav's face you know what? Like we we've been talking about like putting a bag on my face. What what are we going to do on your face? I don't know if I got the feedback that anyone wants to put a bag on my face. So <laughs> So I think just I don't know I want to I want to give our audience an intro on what lead code is and why it's important and why everyone is scared of it. But um what are your thoughts of lead code? Like what were your thoughts on lead code at the very beginning yeah. and how do you feel about it now? Yeah, so for people who do not know what lead code is, first of all, like it's not a website well known, but I think it has become synonymous with programming question websites. Uh similar to what Google is to search today, like people just say Google it. Similarly, like when when people talk about programming practice, question practice or interview practice, they say the lead code. Uh so lead code has I think thousands of questions available, and what we're trying to do here is solving some of Well, we're going to start from easy questions here and we're going to move on to really hard questions in the future and we're going to show that how you can actually go step by step, break it down and make sure that you can solve even the hardest questions very simply. Things that you might be taught in in university but not really and I think uh it's it's mo- probably something you won't even learn in the industry as much. but it's something that is so important because you're going to be using that for every single interview. Yeah. And so most people end up doing it by themselves, which is just ridiculous in my opinion. Um also at the same time, lead code has become such a standard even though like I don't think this is a this is a good way of testing someone's skill, but it is a standardized process that allows us to at least yeah. get some knowledge on how a person can code right like uh, i mean you go interview at different places you do different things right like for example you go to let's say let's say i worked as a assistant software coach back in grade 11 how could they test my skills like they wouldn't be like oh play 90 minute soccer game they couldn't do that but again like for the kids like they were their tests like they're asked about different gameplay so every industry has its own way of testing someone's skill lead code is an online platform that allows you to like that gives you a set of coding challenges and you basically which might involve different sorts of data structures so they're kind of like puzzles and within the 30 to 40 minute time period that you have if you can you know when you when you give someone that opportunity to solve that problem whether it's on a whiteboard whether it's on a computer it really highlights how they work under pressure it highlights some of like their critical thinking it highlights if they sometimes as simple as like hey can this person code like the bare minimum yeah for um, sure so that's why lead code is important um and it has become like a standardized part of like software engineering testing yep I have a question. Um yeah. what programming language do you use for lead coding? 
So, great question. Uh, I think any company that you, I don't know why you're sparking, bro. Like, it's like, you know, like one good question. I, out of all the things that we have like, set up, one good uh, Anywho, out of all, uh, going back to like answering the question of like, what language do we use in the industry? If any company tells you that like, hey, you have to do this interview in C++ or C and no, we will not accept any other language. That's a severe red, red flag because, mm -hmm. you know, when you're inter so I think for me, I still, even though I hate coding in C++ in the industry, uh, because mm -hmm. they're, they're a bunch of like, like nits and bits that I, that I do not appreciate what, whatsoever, but C++ mm -hmm. is the language that I started off coding back when I was, when I went to university, C or C++, mm -hmm. and particularly C++. So even till this day, I still try interviewing in C++. I might depending on the next company that I go to, I might change it up into something else. But for now, at least like if, if someone's like, hey, can you do this question without any practice? I would, I would just use C++. Interesting. Yeah, how about yeah. you? Sorry, yeah. And uh, I was gonna I'll just answer it. Basically, like for me, uh, like a lot of people would say C++, Python, maybe even Java. I think those are the three most common ones. Some people use even JavaScript for that matter. I would say like, I used to use C++ quite a lot because again, like it was my first language. It was the language that I learned when I was like a decade ago now, maybe like right. when I was in 10th grade. Right. So I've been doing it for 10 years. You learned uh, programming in grade 10? Yeah. Yeah. Grade 10. Yeah. No wonder so, you're fucking nerd. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I can't swear on the, on camera, but. I mean, I, I learned uh, HTML and CSS back in seventh grade or eighth grade, and then I learned uh, like, like, why do you have to be such a high achiever? I don't get it. Like, you know, why can you not be a normal kid, you know, sitting in your basement and uh, listening to music? I was like, yeah. My point is that um, like C++ was a great language and I was using it uh, constantly for my interviews. The one thing you'll realize, like if you start giving too many interviews, is that you run out of time in C++. Just because program, uh, like interviewers, like once you start getting higher and higher in level, uh, pro interviewers are also asking more and more tougher questions. So if you can, like I would really recommend learning Python for that, because Python would simplify uh, your process so much more, and you can really focus on talking about hey, like how to go through the challenge, how to go through the problem. You can actually test out a unit test case before you start programming. And after you, you're done programming, you can actually test whether your program was robust or not. Mm -hmm. And you can even probably write a unit test case which shows that you are actually able to test it out. So in the end, your programmer is left with the idea that, hey, you know all the, uh, all the steps of programming. Yeah. I think that's definitely very valid and very useful. Do you want to go through, like, I think, like, when I was trying to do lead code, I think a like, lot of people, uh, like, told me how to go through the interview process. Mm -hmm. Do you have a particular template or a way to do to lead coding? Yeah, for sure. So I think, I think this is very important as when I prep, I prep like this. This is something I, um, and I was actually giving this advice to someone else that I mentor, I was mentoring, but when you walk into an interview, it's an unfamiliar process, right? So the reason why Arnav is asking if there's a pro there's a um, particular step-by-step -step process that I follow is because this is an unknown zone. Anything can happen. You can have a bad interview. Or you can have a really hard question. You can, you know, break your leg and, like, you can cr use crush on your way to the interview. A lot of things can play, play into your anxiety. But if you add some structure into your interview solution or into this, like, whole interview process... It actually makes your head like process things a lot better. So I have a seven or eight step process and I'll list them out one by one. Step one, when you walk into an interview and you know, introduce yourself and like you get like you get to know the interviewer, your interviewer is there as someone to talk to. You're always being judged what on how you're communicating because the, your interviewer who is interviewing you is actually going to be your coworker. He's not your professor. He's not going to be your high school teacher. He's not going to be your, uh, you know, he's not. He's a friend. He is someone that you'll be working with. So you are interviewing him as much as he's interviewing you. Keep that mindset. Reduce mm -hmm. that, reduce that, like, take that wall down that, like, this interview is, like, high and almighty and I have to, like, impress him. You have to impress him, but not to the point where you have to, like, suck up to him and everything. 
So introduce yourself, make yourself comfortable. Yeah. Once you get a question, don't jump into a solution. Jumping into a solution is actually way later down the line. Step one, ask clarifying questions. What do I mean by that? When someone gives you a problem, ask them the question on like, hey, like I'm, let's say someone's like, hey, find values in this array. That array can be really big, really small. That array can have numbers, that array can have integers, that letters, characters, strings, whatnot. You don't know anything about this. They, your interviewer just gave you a very generic question. Ask these clarifying questions to understand what you're looking for. Because what it shows that like, it shows that you question and when you in the industry, you will question like when someone's giving you, someone's asking you to like do something. Step number two, walk through an example. So if someone's like, hey, can you find a value in an array? Go and you already asked the question, let's say like the array can only contain like integers. So give an example that you can walk through. So if I'm given, so if I was talking to an interviewer, I'll be like, so by the way, based on your problem, if I was given an array that had the numbers negative one, five, seven, and nine, mm -hmm. and I had to find if the number negative five is in it, I would basically return you a true or false, correct? Yeah. And then make sure that like you understand you give, you're giving out what the input and outputs are. You're very clear on that with your interviewer. Then on the third step, walk through it as a human brain. Like don't think anytime someone gives you a computer program, computer coding challenge, never think of it in terms of a coding problem. Think of it as a human, like a genu generic human being, how you would solve it. Okay, mm. so give the so if I'm given an array, I'll be like, okay, well, I'm given an array. I will walk through each one of them, whether they're sorted or unsorted. Again, that's another question that you could have asked your interviewer, by the way, that whether it was sorted or not, is whether they're sorted or not, and then see if that value is in it. That's mm. my way of solving it. Now, mm. step number four, we're in step number four. This is where it gets, it starts getting, it starts getting more so the solution and less on like these thinking process. Give the most naive solution possible, like a naive solution to this coding problem. Why is this important? As an interviewer, when I interview people, sometimes they jump into doing the most optimized solution because it's an easy problem. And it's great that you're trying that, but at the end of the day, by the end of your 30 minutes, if you can't solve the question that that's given to you, mm -hmm then that means that you just can't code. I don't have anything to judge you based on. And that's an instant rejection. So step, so step four is basically saying that give the most naive possible solution for the yeah. interviewer to like look through. Step five, now they have the naive solution. I know that you code. Again, I haven't touched coding. You just like mm -hmm. talk through your solution. You're still communicating with me. I haven't touched the board. Step five is like now you're like optimizing and talking to your interviewer and your interviewer probably will give you a hint being like, hey, by the way, that sounds good to me. You can start coding right now. So you start writing the skeleton code and slowly start optimizing being like, hey, by the way, I realized that rather than going through rather than going through each value over and over again, I have to go through all of it. Maybe if it's a sorted array, maybe I can do other mechanism, like maybe do a binary search if it's possible. Uh, is there po like, you know, there are multiple algorithms I can use if it's a sorted array. So you talk through these, like you talk through the scenarios and your interviewer mm -hmm. generally agrees or disagrees with you. And like, that's a conversation that you'll have. Step six, once you have your solution is basically remember the first set of examples that you did. Like remember when you're walking through those examples in, as you're, as you're presenting your solution, go through those examples. like talk, you tell your interviewer, Hey, now, because I have the solution, I'll going to, I'm going to verify this with the unit test or like the situations that are in, on the, the first, very second step. Once you have verified the unit test, step seven, the final step to this, runtime and memory complexity. Runtime, again, this is basically O of N. You can be like, hey, this array has N elements. So if I had to search through all of them, or if I had to, if I had to go through, iterate through all of them, that would be O of N in the worst case scenario. So the runtime of this would be O of N. Memory mm -hmm. complexity, um, I'm not using any additional auxiliary memory to hold any values. So there is no like there is no additional memory being used. So talk about this, and then finally hand your solution over. So that's that would be that would be the whole interview process end to end. Yeah, I think I think that was really I think that was really nicely put put 
put together more. Mm. I think that makes a lot of sense. And I think like if I was an interviewer and if you gave me all these steps, I would definitely be like, yeah, like you're, you're definitely going through to the next round for sure. Yeah. So I impress you. <laughs> I don't know if, if impress is the word I would use, but okay. You did the bare minimum, um, but it's all right. Uh, <laughs> it's insane. It's insane. <laughs> no, but uh, I think I think that makes a lot of sense. I think um, I think one of the things people forget is auxiliary memory that I think Mo said, and uh, I think a lot of people forget writing a nice solution. So definitely important. It is a good time that we stop here and actually show a working uh, working lead code. It's, it's, it's crazy. crazy. I'm, I'm seeing my nightmares. nightmares. Like, like uh, all, all my nightmares, nightmares in one video. I see Arno at the top at the bottom, and then I'm seeing the speed code question. This is literally the worst thing that could possibly happen. happen. All right, so we're gonna start off with a very easy question today. Um, we we went easy on Mohammed, and Mohammed is also like programming in C plus plus, which is generally a harder language, as I mentioned, than Python. So um, we're gonna go through a bit of an information before we start. Mohaimin, um just make sure like people who are watching, <clears throat> they don't know what a what C plus plus syntax is, what a class is, what a vector is, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So make sure you talk them through this a little bit as well. Every pro problem, if you want to see it in any, any other language, please feel free to reach out to us and tell them uh, to ask us if you need that, uh, if you need that uh, pro problem solved in that language. In this problem, Mohammed, it's a very simple problem, but Mohammed is gonna try to take you through how the steps of interview would look like. So Mohammed, we I'm gonna give you about 30 minutes. So this is gonna be like right. a mock interview. Uh, we're gonna skip through the part of introduction for now. And we're gonna just jump straight into the programming part. So, hey Mo, how are you? Uh, good to see you. Let's let's begin your interview. This is the question. You said I'm gonna jump into the introduction and just then post about introducing me. Thank you. Thanks, startup. I'm doing great. Phenomenal. Okay. How was your night last night? Uh, yes. Let's. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> please do not ask that during an interview. That is really bad. Um. um okay. Let yeah. me. Let, let's jump into the uh, programming question right away. Can you take us through? This is the problem. I'll give you five mm -hmm. minutes to read through this and let's start from there. Oh. All right. I. And by the way, for our audience, this is how I would have approached it. Actually, fun fact, I got this interview for my Microsoft, uh, one of my Microsoft on campus round, I believe, like when they flew someone out. So definitely we'll talk through you about like what happened in this problem. So first thing, this, this screen is too tiny. So I'm going to be zooming in a lot more. Okay. Is this too zoomed in? It's not too zoomed in. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So the problem, it says to sum, given an array of integers, nums and integer target return indices of the two numbers such that they add up to the target. Mm -hmm. You may assume that each input would have exactly one solution and you may not use the same elements twice. Immediately what this tells me, again, this is I this is me thinking through my head, not talking to Arnold right now at all. Immediately this I can see a bunch of corner cases right now or a bunch of like restrictions right now. Like there's only one solution. Um, it has to add up like there there is an array of integers so another another question that i can clarify and these are again by the way when i'll be given this question i'll be asking arnav as an interviewer these questions like hey by the way is it is it an array of integers if it's an array of real numbers are there decimals in it what's it yeah what is let, let, let's let's say it's 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 real like it's just n natural numbers for now. Let's assume right. that these are natural yeah. numbers. No, that's what I'm saying. It's just like I will be like I'll be asking my interviewers this thing, and then like the fact that I'll ask, the next question that I would have asked is like, hey, are there more than one solution? And what happens if there are more than one solution? But clearly, this answer, the constraints are given to me. So you can return the answer in any order. Okay, so that means that like it will be a pair, as you can as you can see when we so given this set of numbers two, seven, eleven, fifteen and my target is nine, mm -hmm. what I'll be doing is like, I'll have to find two numbers mm -hmm. that add up to the target. So I can see two and seven, they add up to the target of nine. So that means like, I'll be returning the indices where this is the first value and this is the second value. So I'm returning zero and one. Um, again, very easy. Uh, the same thing happens here, nums here, I can see the target is six. So the target is, Target is six. Am I being dumb or does this like 
oh right so it's like one and two it's like anywho uh here uh, by going through this again uh three plus two that is five so no that doesn't work three plus four that is seven that doesn't work then two plus four that is six so yes that yeah, is equal so to i'm going to stop you for a second here mo um so of, of course as you can see like uh this is not exactly how a mock interview would work this is a, like Mohammed is obviously running you through how he would approach this problem, which is great. Um, but we, I wanted to stop and mention for people who do not know what indices are and what this output looks like. So zero and one, like basically it's saying the position of the element in a list of items. So an array is just a list of items. Zero and it starts from item number zero. So for example, Generally, like when you see like a bulleted list on a Word document or any other document, you will start from one, two, three, four, like that. Here, we just go from the first first item to the last item, but we start from zero in programming. And uh, right. what Mohammed is saying in the example two, for example, three comma two comma four, output being one and two, uh, one is basically the index one, which where two is located because index zero is where three is located and index uh, four is at index two, where, which is basically, and that's why two plus four is six, which is why the output is one and two. So right. continue, sorry, Mo. Yeah. yeah, so again, I have I have this constraint. Generally in an interview, your interviewer will give you this, but if not, you have to ask these clarifying questions in to make this obviously easier. Finally, um, if there's a follow-up question, we'll get to this. We're not gonna look at it right now. So let's get started with our interview. Now, now that I'm done with that side, I'm going to be closing that, making this bigger, because again, what do we say about lights and bigger space? They attract bugs. <laughs> okay, all right, I'll stop talking. Um, okay, cool. So the other thing is like, I'm going to be doing this interview in C++. By the way, if you're not familiar with this platform, you can actually change it to any any language that you want, Python, C Sharp, uh, Kotlin. I don't know what language that is, honestly. I, you don't know what Kotlin never. is? Oh, interesting. No. I actually have never used it. Uh, but anywho, the other thing that I can see in this is like, I can see that the return output type is a vector. A vector, again, is uh, is kind of sort of like a list. It is it is a list that is like, it's like a C sharp C++ plus predefined type, which looks like an array or like a list. And it looks exactly like this. Um, so. I, and it, it only contains integers, where the first element would be one of the indices, and the second element would be the other indices. Okay, cool. Now let's go. Let's walk through the step that I uh, that I was talking about. Step one: ask clarifying questions. Mohammed, I'm gonna just move your face to the other side because uh, I think like you're gonna be blocking the solution. So I think everyone's read through the problem. So I'm just gonna move yourself, uh, and then I'm gonna. Absolutely. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Let's go. Sure. All right. Ask clarifying questions. Have I have I done that? Yes, I have. When I asked about like I asked about whether there are integers, mm -hmm. integers, then I asked about uh, so number of solutions. Okay. Um, You're going off the screen. Oh. Just uh, just okay. put it on the second line. Yeah. After integers, just put it on. The yeah. Line. Uh, order of uh indices. Okay. So they, this was step one. Mm -hmm. Step two was walking through an example. Mm -hmm. So let's walk through an example. Like obviously we walk through it with the test cases, but again, if I was given an array two, uh, seven, eleven, fifteen, mm -hmm. and my target was equal to nine, I'll be I'll be returning uh, I'll be returning zero comma one for the first two indices. Correct. Um, step three. Arnav, remind me what step three is. Um, so we already walked through an example. I'm assuming like finding a knife solution would be what I would do. Right. Well, uh, well, in your head at this point, you should be thinking about it how you will solve it as a human being. Yeah. yeah let's just go into uh, talk about knife solution. So, yeah. take this in. As a human, how would I approach this? If someone gave me a bunch of numbers, they'd be like, "Yo, like." Do two numbers add up to the target that I'm telling you? I'm like, what do I do? I just, first of all, I need to go through this. I need to go through each and every one number, right? Like in my head, I'm like, okay, I see two and seven here that add up to nine. Well, does seven and 11 add up to nine? No, that adds up to 18. Does 11 and 15 add up to nine? Nope, it doesn't. I can do math, but that's probably 26. Uh, so, you know, these numbers doesn't work. And 
So I have to find the combination of each number with every other number, right? Like after I have 2 plus 7, after I have 2 plus 11, after I have 2 plus 15, after I have 7 plus 11, 7 plus 2, 7 plus 15. So that, that's one thing that I can do. Mm-hmm. So my, that's, a, that's how my human brain is thinking. So now in the nice solution bit, in in a in an isolation bit, what I would do is like I'll probably do some sort of iter- take some iterative approach, yeah. go through each value and try adding it up with another value. Mm-hmm. Now there is an there is an issue with it. What what's an what's an issue? So what what if I I have an example where my numbers are two, three, and one, and my target was equal to four. If I'm iterating every number with every other number. Where, let's, let's say, say I take a first iteration, I go to 2, 3, 1. Then the next iteration, if I add 2 plus 2, that adds up to 4. But that doesn't work because I'm adding the same number twice. How about, how about you code it out and we can see what the problem is because it Absolutely. doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. So uh, let's go. So I'm, I'm going to be using a for loop and I will be using. So again. I, I, I'm iterating through every value. The nums is my nums is my vector that has like that has all these values in it. So I'm iterating through it, and um, just out of curiosity, Mohammed, uh, because I again coming from someone who hasn't touched C plus plus in a while, uh, wondering like, so what does size of nums actually mean? Right. right. So, so size, size in this case gives the length of the length of the array. So you are iterating from because we know Arnav j- you just mentioned that indices start from zero and not one. So when you start from zero, the size of this vector, for example, this two three one vector, is actually going to be three because there are three elements. And because I start with zero, zero gives me the first one. One would give me the second one. Two would give me the third one. So I want the iterator to always have a have the max limit of this iterator should be one less than the size because it, the iterator starts at zero. So the size of nums returns the size of this array. So what you're saying is like if 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 I was going through an array of list from let's say a five number list, the i value, the variable i that you just made would go from zero, one, two, three, and four. So zero, one, two, three, and four, and that's five numbers. So that's why it's iterated right. to the entire array. Okay. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So plus plus i is just incrementing it by one, correct? Right. Okay. Right. Right. So, so plus plus i just increments the iterator, which means like okay. I'm at zero. So uh, after this loop is done, this will actually iterate to one. After that, next, this is the in C share. C plus plus, you can do the same thing here. Right now, this won't make a difference, but it makes a difference in something at a different point. But for now, we will we won't go into that detail for now because it's not relevant to this problem. Makes sense. Okay. So, so total sum, now I want to access the element nums i mm-hmm. plus nums j. Okay, so now we basically yeah. have a, like two, two for loops, which basically goes through, we're, we're going through it twice, and we're saying, okay, if the total sum is equal to nums i plus nums j, uh, right. and we're saying, okay, so nums, are like every, every number we are adding it together, we're not adding two numbers together in the array, and we're checking right. whether it's equal to the target. Okay, makes sense. Right. So, so the, this, this makes, makes sense. sense. Now, the, the issue with this, let's let's run through the issue. So, so I have an example right here, 231, two, and, and my target is equal to 4. Yeah. So on the first iteration, I'll be doing, I'll, I'll go with 2, and this, my so nums mm-hmm. i equals 0 is 2. Right? Yeah. And then, Two is basically, basically doing a loop, loop against all the other numbers, numbers again. again. So then num j equals zero. zero. Mm-hmm. This also gives me two. Mm. And when, when this gives me two, so two plus two is equal to four, which is equal to my target. Yeah. So I'll be returning my i and j, which is zero comma zero. But is that an accurate solution? Can we see the result? Can you actually run it? Yeah. 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 Um, fun, fun fact, fact I, I might I might be fumbling this right, right now because I don't know if this is the result. Let's, let's see. Let's see what, what happens. happens. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Compilation, Compilation errors. So, so it, it doesn't it return. It's so not all that because I'm not returning. I need to return something. Uh, how do I do this actually? Uh, 
Spectre. I forgot how City Club looks like Spectre. Uh, I don't know. Uh, because, because it's not a uh, negative. One. So I, I guess we didn't talk about this condition. What happens if there is no no return? Like there's no value that is equal to nine. So actually. Given a problem, you have to have a solution. Okay. There, there would be one solution. So okay. that's why I was like, that, that was one of the I horror see. cases. Let's, let's see. Okay. So, so now. You do pass one case. Okay, good. Oh, that was just crazy. <laughs> All right. So that Actually, means. Actually, can I? I'm so interested. Can I do this rather than doing this? Let me double check. Oh, that compiles. That's so crazy. Oh, C++ got smarter. Um, All right. That that is insane. So this works, right? All this right, works yeah. because again, this in this case the values aren't the same. Like two is not equal to two. Like right. no, the first it, two numbers. Are. Yeah, you mean yeah. like two plus two equals is not equal to nine, correct? Right. Yeah, but, but in this case, again, the same case happens. Three plus three is equal to six. So the return output that we got is zero comma zero. But we need to have two separate output cases. Mm -hmm. um, I'm assuming the same thing happened right here, right? So that that same thing happened. So now we obviously need to adjust for that. Now in my head, I'm talking to you, Arnav, you're my interviewer right now. Mm -hmm. One thing that I can do is like, if I already, so well, let's just say, let's say, I obviously can ignore this condition, mm -hmm. right? Where I just, you know, whenever I'm going through the loop, like I have i equals zero, I can start with j equals one, mm. which means I start from the indices right next to it, mm. right? So what, what does that do? Then I basically add up two with three and one. Mm, okay. So you're going one after the i, yeah? Right. Yeah. Oh, so wow. that I can just I don't have to because that's one we are solving. It. Now mm. you can do like, but Mo, what if like I'm in the second one? So basically, if I do uh, j equals one, then I get two equals three. So that doesn't work, and then we iterate through. Mm. But then you can be like, but Mo, aren't you missing out on all these calculations? Like, aren't you like, let's say we are in this eleven bit right here? Mm -hmm. Aren't you missing out on all these like other calculations? Mm -hmm. Like. Would you would you not have missed that? And my answer would be no, you wouldn't, right? Because when you do two and you add up with seven, you start off with two and you're adding it with seven, eleven, fifteen. Yeah. That's the first iteration. Then you start off with seven. You don't have to add seven with two again because you already have done that with two plus seven. Yeah, that would give me a duplicate answer as well, right? Right. Yeah. yeah well, and well, you're just gonna be doing a duplicated duplicated calculation that you have already done, so that you mm -hmm. don't really need to do that. So let's. So we can actually. Mm -hmm. We can do this. So J equals I plus one. Okay. So yeah. whenever I is, I just start with one up. And then that should so now this should obviously help us with this example. And we just saw it. So let's let's run this. I have a question by the way. Yes. Um so right now you're returning I and J. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what happens if there's two, like, for example, for nine, there's two and seven and there's three and six, like, for example, two comma seven comma three comma mm -hmm. six. Wouldn't that cause us a problem? Uh, again, based on the constraints of this problem, there's only exactly one solution. Ah, I see. I see. Okay. But, but that's a really good question to ask your interviewer for sure. What happens if generally your interviewer will tell you, ideally, sometimes what the a better version of the solution can be like return all the possible cases. You can actually like, hold them in an array. That's also definitely possible. Okay. Under back. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's, let's see if we can uh, run this for all the case cases. So this passes all the three test cases. Can we submit this? Great. So again, this is the nice solution. We can optimize it and I haven't done that, but Arnold wants to see if this passes everything. Yes, so, I, mean, I think we can stop here after we submit this because I think like for this session, I think we can just go for the knife solution. Um, okay. I think like we shouldn't like go too too in depth because now we're gonna touch some data structures which we haven't covered yet. Um, right. But I think I think okay. yeah, let's see if we can if we can submit this. And it's accepted. Wow, amazing job! Looks like you you wow. are a software developer. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> My job is saved. Um, yeah, but one thing that folks you can see here is basically you can see exactly you. I'm beating eight point nine four percent. I'm really wondering. This is a very nice solution. Who, like, who are these? I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. So I guess so, folks. Um. Uh. From with this, like, let me just quickly summarize before we leave. Uh, by the way, great job, Mo. I think I think it, it really explains a lot of stuff. 
uh, just really quickly I think like after this you also actually tested it which is amazing for me like you actually went through it and you checked whether each solution worked if you guys want you can actually test it even further I don't think we're gonna delve too much into it for the sake of time right now but I think from what we can see here we actually jumped into a loop which is actually we did like two for loops um, together and Mohammed actually went through each step and his thought process on how he would do this and in the future we are going to talk more into programming going into the depths for it mostly for the beginners in the big beginning and then we're going to take you through more and more complex problems right now uh, he returned only one solution. Uh, there are more variations to this where you can return multiple solutions as well. Uh, and we are going to show that in the future. We're going to show how we can beat not only like 10, 20, 30% of the users, but 100% of the users on lead code and how we can optimize it to the mo best ability possible. Wait, 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 pause. Yeah, we're <laughs> not beating 100% of the users. We're not that good. All right. <laughs> My God. Uh, thank you. All right, thank you, thank you everyone, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. All right, thanks, folks. See ya.